and welcome to an extremely spur of the moment royalty soaps video. I was not actually going to film this, I leave to go out of town in two hours, but I really, really, really wanted a video to be out for you guys to watch on Saturday, so I asked Caleb if he wouldn't mind cutting the soap for me while I'm gone, so there is potentially going to be footage of Caleb cutting soap, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm really looking forward to that. So the soap I am making today is inspired by the drink a blue Hawaiian, which looks really, really beautiful. I haven't ever personally had one, but when I looked up pictures of it, it looks like a ice blue slushy, and then it has like a little maraschino cherry and like a pineapple slice on top and maybe some like salt sprinkled around the edge. I don't know if it's like a type of margarita. I don't know. I didn't look up um, what the drink actually is made out of, but I had this fragrance from Nature's Garden Candles, and it smells amazing, and I really wanted to use it, and so I'm finally going to do that. I am also changing up my recipe. I'm using a Bastille recipe today. Um, so lots and lots and lots of olive oil. It should stay liquidy for a really long time. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this fragrance directly into the oils. And I've already measured out the correct amount that was in the bottle. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix that up with the stick blender. I'll knock this part out because it's just loud and nothing happens. <laughs> I'm also working at room temperature, so I'm going to go ahead and pour in my lye water solution. This reminds me, this fragrance, if you guys have Sonics near you, this totally reminds me of a blue coconut slush. Very, very, very coconutty. Also kind of smells like um, fruit punch, so it's really an awesome fragrance. I just haven't ever used it before. I'm just mixing this up until it's a very, very, very thin trace, just past emulsification. So I'm going to pour into these, and because there is such a lot of water in this recipe, um, there will potentially be glycerin rivers, which I am 100% okay with. I think that will add a lot to it, actually. I'm just going to pour this in here. And in the blue one here, I have turquoise mica from Nurture Soap Supply. Rip off that little bit there. I actually poured a little bit too much in here. In this one, I'm going to have white. I might actually enter this soap in the Brambleberry Soap the Rainbow Challenge for Blue Week. So I'm going to put the white in here. And then in this big one right here, I'm going to put in some Brilliant Blue Mica from Nurture Soap. This is going to be a very, very, very blue soap. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and mix up the white first because it's the lightest color. Very good. Now I'm going to mix up the turquoise. Now I'm going to mix up the big thing of blue here. I'm going to start just by moving my stick blender around with it so that it doesn't puff, puff, puff out of the container. Alright, so this soap is not doing exactly what I want it to. It's kind of looking separate which is weird because it shouldn't. Um, I haven't worked with this fragrance before, but tons of other people have, and it's supposed to be a really, really good one, so I'm not really understanding that. So I had to pour the turquoise um, back into the big pot because it was looking so strange and I just thought maybe it just needs to be mixed up a little more. But even so, the big one is now looking kind of separate -y and weird, so I don't know what the deal with that is. Also just could be that it needs to be mixed up a little more. It smells absolutely fabulous. I just hope this turns out right since Caleb's going to be the one that has to cut it. I'd hate for him to like find a weird soap and be like, why can't I cut this? I'm going to pour this in, just like so. It's going to kind of mix up the white a little bit, so there should just be swirls of white in there. This is really, really difficult to pour, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh shoot, right in the side. I guess I need to transfer it to a smaller bowl. I'm going to try to scoop that out, just like that. Gross. <laughs> well, at least you guys know that I also make mistakes now. <laughs> Y'all always like, it looks so perfect every time. Well, that's why I'm keeping this this one in and not like ditching the, uh, ditching the film because it's probably really good to let you guys know, no, no, it does go wrong sometimes. <laughs> I am also like plopping stuff absolutely everywhere. <laughs> so I'm going to put some more white in now. been a long time since I worked with soap this liquidy. <laughs> and it looks like I'm going to have a little leftover 
for a bonus bar, as my mom likes to call them. When I have some soap left over, I pour them into an extra little container, and then I give her the bonus bar. <laughs> Righto, so I'm gonna clean this mess up <laughs> that I have made here, and then we will come back and do the piping. Okay, so the piping is not exactly doing what it's supposed to be doing. I'm not entirely sure why. I think it has to do with the fact that I mixed it up. About 15 degrees cooler than I normally do, which sometimes slows down the uh, hardening process. So I'm not going to actually pipe it. I'm just kind of scooping it on there. And then I'm going to take this brilliant blue mica that I have mixed with olive oil. Kind of drizzle that around. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the teal mica. This is going to make really, really pretty lines in the soap once it's cut. Mix this up a bit. I might move it around with a spoon or something after I have dripped it all on there. I don't know, it depends on how I'm feeling. I'm super bummed! I really wanted to pike this, but I absolutely do not have time now. And I think it'll still look pretty, even if it isn't exactly what I had originally envisioned. I don't know, maybe by the time I scoop this on, it will have set up enough to at least pipe the very top. This probably looks more accurate like a drink, too, because I know that when you're making a drink at a bar, you're obviously not piping the whipped cream on top. <laughs> Oops, that was a little much there. Oof. Living dangerously. <laughs> I kind of like this, actually, now that I'm doing it. Now I'm sort of happy that it turned out a little weird. What I'm really hoping is that Caleb doesn't call me in, like, 48 hours and say, Katie, this stuff on top is crumbly and hard as a rock. Because we'll all know what that means. That's really what I'm hoping, because I really don't want to ditch this whole batch. Okay, so I'm going to add the rest of the color on top. I'm going to leave what's left of the piping, and hopefully actually get to use it for piping. Then I'm going to get my glitter and put my glitter on, because I don't want the glitter to be on the cherry or the pineapple or the salt. This looks cool. This looks like kind of arctic at this point because I haven't put all the tropical fruit pieces on yet. Cool! Okay, so glitter time. Starting off with the diamond glitter from TKB, my all-time favorite glitter. Next I'm going to use some holographic glitter. This is also from TKB. I'm not entirely sure what the name of this is. I've sort of forgotten. <laughs> I'll try to link it down in the description box below though. And now I'm going to use some turquoise glitter. This stuff comes out so Past, I'm really gonna try to not have it in clumps all over the soap. That's normally what happens. <laughs> okay, that's pretty evenly distributed. Now, I'm going to try to pipe the rest of the soap. We'll see how that, how that works out. Okay, I've just put some of it in. Let's see if it just like drips out. No, it's not dripping, hooray. I'm not being near as talky in this video and I think it's because I am intimidated by the fact that Caleb is home and in the living room and can probably hear everything I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear that on the camera, but he said can't hear a word. It's slightly intimidating. I had to get over that um, whenever I lived with my brother too, and it's like different for every person. Like I thought maybe with Kenny that it would like, oh yeah, you're used to having someone around that can hear you, but no, apparently I have to get over it for each person that can hear me. <laughs> okay, so now with the little bit I have left up here, I'm just gonna fill in the gaps so that any little bit that hasn't been piped now has some piping on it. It's not gonna make a huge difference what it once it's cut, but it still looks kind of pretty when it's still in low form. Okay, cool. Now for my favorite part, we get to put the embeds on. So I made these little soap balls days and days ago um, with this exact intention. So I'm just going to put these on each one of the bars. Kind of squishing it in there, making sure whenever he puts it in the cutter that it's not going to get all, you know, wonky and have them all chopped in half because he is definitely not as used to doing this as I am, so I want to make it as easy as I possibly can on him so that he doesn't have to figure out what the best way to cut is and which bars to sacrifice. <laughs> I'm scared about having to cut these bars, Caleb. No. He said no. They can hear me. 
Are you sure they can hear you? I'm not. I told him that he should try and talk tomorrow if he can. Whenever he's cutting these, we'll see how that works out. <laughs> I would be really, really keen to see that footage. <laughs> okay, second one over here. The only problem, just so you know, if you're going to put piping on top of a soap, but you're not actually going to pipe it, so you're still going to have like this um, mountain <laughs> shape to your soap, but you don't want to put it in a piping bag, the only problem I have found with that is that it does make your bars um, pretty uneven. And if you're going for uniformity throughout your entire batch, you're going to have... Every now and then I have like almost an ounce and a half difference on certain bars, so if that really matters to you, you should probably pipe every single batch instead of just um, slapping it on with a spatula. Obviously the ones that I'm putting cherries on right now are taller than the ones on the ends, say. Awesome! Okay, now it's time for the pineapples. And I could technically put that in quotes because what I'm putting on here is not a pineapple. <laughs> you can see um, the mold I made was from an orange and then I just cut it into pieces so I was hoping it would kind of look like a pineapple but I don't know if I actually achieved that or not. Oh well it looks like some piece of tropical fruit on the side. Good enough. <laughs> I'm gonna work on both of them while doing this. This fragrance is like one of my new favorites. I'm definitely going to have to get some more because it's Super strong and smells amazing. Okay, so now that I have put in all the oranges, I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of salt here on the top while everything's still good and wet. I think that's really going to add to the authentic kind of drink look. And obviously all the little pieces won't stick, but some of them will. And we are done! Yay. So this is what the bars look like up close. I'm actually a lot happier with the way that I did the piping for this even though it started out as an accident. I think it looks really really yummy. And when we come back it will be Caleb cutting these and again I'm not sure if I will keep that footage or if he'll be comfortable talking or whatever so we'll have to see how that goes but if you enjoyed this video you can give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and maybe even leave me a comment about it below. And if we have any footage after this, it will be bonus footage. <laughs> and if you want to see the cut bars, I will have pictures of that up on my Facebook and on my Instagram.